Welcome. In this video, we want to look at accounting for revenue under IPSAS. Uh, and we're going to specifically focus on non-exchange transactions, which are covered under IPSAS 23. So when you look at revenue under IPSAS, there are three standards that deal specifically with revenue. IPSAS 23 deals with revenue from non-exchange transactions. IPSAS 9 deals with revenue from exchange transactions and IPSAS 11 deals with construction contracts. And in this slide, in this video, we're going to focus on IPSAS 23. Right. But let's get an understanding. What is revenue? Revenue is gross inflow of economic benefits or service potential, which is received or receivable and should lead to an increase in the net assets or, in, or equity of an entity. Now, when there are gross inflows that comes into an entity, uh, for the purposes of, uh, of understanding what is revenue, it excludes contributions that comes from owners. Because when owners contribute in uh, um, uh, cash into the business that can increase net assets, but that's not covered under revenue, as well as amounts collected as an agent where you're collecting on behalf of another entity. Let's talk about the difference between exchange and non-exchange revenue. It's important to understand this because exchange revenue uh, but applies both the public and private sector, but it is rare within the pub private sector to get non-exchange revenue. So when you talk about exchange revenue, an entity receives revenue and gives approximate value in return. Whereas when you're dealing with non-exchange revenue, an entity receives revenue and gives no or less than equal approximate value in return. And like I said, Exchange revenue is more prevalent in the public as well as the private sector, whereas non-exchange revenue is mostly prevalent in the public sector. An example is TV sales and, uh, TV sales and hire receives $1,000 from a customer and in turn gives the customer a set of sofas with $1,000. Then an example of a non-exchange revenue is the government receives payee, which is pay as you earn, from employees of TV sales and I, but does not give anything directly back in return. Now, what's important to note is when you look at non-exchange revenue, especially in the public sector, entities can provide a variety of public services to taxpayers, but does not do so in consideration for the payment of taxes. Now, just to also emphasize, when an entity receives value and pays an amount lower than the approximate value, there might be an element of both exchange and non-exchange transactions. So, the real substance needs careful consideration. Right, just for knowledge check, identify on the list that I've given below examples that you would say these are exchange transactions and ones that you say these are non-exchange transactions. Right, just to run through, water revenue from a city council, this would be exchange transactions because you actually pay for the water based on usage. Sewage rates for city council, this would be non-exchange transactions because what it's amount that you're supposed to pay regardless of whether you use the service or you don't use the service. So it is a form of tax. The same thing with the business license for a city council. VAT revenue is obviously non-exchange transactions. A government grant, non-exchange transaction. A fine, non-exchange transaction. Toll get fees, non-exchange transactions. It is a form of tax. Electricity charges. This is an exchange transaction. You're paying for the electricity that you're using. Rental income from uh, f from rental of vendor stalls. This would be exchange transactions because you're actually paying for renting out a store. University fees paid by the government. When you look at this one, it's important to understand whether the invested, the fees are market or they are not market. So there could be an element of both exchange or non-exchange. Books donated by the UN to university library, this is a non-exchange transaction. Knowledge check. And it receives $6 million 
funding from a multilateral development agency. The agreement stipulates that the entity must repay 5 million for the funding received over a period of 10 years at 5% interest when the market rate for similar loans is 11%. Are there any non exchange transactions in this scenario? Now, just to discuss, you'll find when you look at this particular scenario, there's an element of both exchange and non exchange revenue. For example, the the one the six five million dollars which is going to be repaid back that is an exchange transactions the one million dollars which is the difference that becomes a donation that becomes a non-exchange transaction again the rate of the loan at 11 percent that becomes the exchange transactions and the interest which is the difference between five and eleven which is six percent which is not repaid becomes a donation and that becomes our non-exchange revenue in this case Let's talk about recognition of, of revenue. If an entity receives an asset in a non exchange transaction, it recognizes revenue in the same amount provided that the asset can be measured reliably. Ipsos 1 defines assets as the resources controlled by an entity as a result of past events from which economic benefits or service potential are expected to flow to the entity. Pledges, promises, or announcement of intention to pay are not generally regarded as sufficient to ensure an enforceable claim that's control of an asset. So the point that I'm trying to make is, sometimes when a donation comes through in the form of cash, it is easy to measure the value of the asset. But sometimes you've got donations that come as assets. So you have to measure what would be the fair value of that, of that particular asset. So, in, so there are instances when revenue, when assets received are not reported as, as revenue or non-exchange revenue as it were. For example, I've dealt with uh, contributions from owners, assets linked with obligations, and as well as advanced receipts, and we're going to look at this in detail. Right, let's look at this example. How much revenue should be recognized in the following situ situations? City of Harare receives $100 for a business license covering the period from 1 October to 30 September in the following year. City of Harare's year end is 31 December. How much revenue should City of Harare recognize? In this case, the full $100 should be recognized uh, in, the, in the month in which it is received. There is no need for you to spread this revenue over a period of one year because City of Ferrari is not providing any service. This is a form of tax which is due on the first month uh, or the first day of each month, uh, the first of October rather, and therefore full revenue should be recognized. Second question: Yes, the clinic receives on 29 December a grant of 50,000 to complete the maternity ward. In this case, no revenue should be recognized because it is linked to an obligation they have to construct a maternity ward. To the extent to which the ward has not been constructed, no revenue should be recognized. Minister of Finance gave $20 million to PSB so that they can meet their regulatory capital requirements. This is an injection from the owners and should not be regarded as revenue. 